60 was a very pivotal birthday for me. When I turned 60, three years ago now, I did a major audit of my life in all departments. And there were a few things in particular that I decided were not serving purpose anymore and I was going to give them up. I wasn't going to do them anymore because I felt that they were things that were more appropriate for younger adults and people in their 30s, 40s. They were things that were a bit of a hangover from my days at work. They served me really well back then. They were things that I don't think I would have actually had the success that I had if I if I'd have ditched those things in my uh, early days. But uh, in this video, I'm just going to go through five things that don't serve their purpose anymore. The first thing is I don't care what people think of me. People have their opinions on my retirement choices, on my appearance. I actually get a few comments on these videos about my teeth. Yeah, I'm well aware that I've got one or two little chips in my teeth, but they're all mine. I think some of my American viewers actually think I've got rotten teeth for some reason, but there you are. That's their opinion, and you know what? I just really don't care. Now, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I get that. And I'm a big, big fan of free speech. I do actually think that you should express your opinions. But there's no point getting absolutely heated about the whole subject. I'm just on a bit of a walkabout here at the moment and it's quite busy in York so just have to excuse me pausing from time to time to cross roads so, so that I don't get run over. The other thing is York's quite a busy city, a lot of students um, and I'm just walking in an area now where you have student accommodation so people will suddenly come out of nowhere and no doubt run into me. But yeah so I'm not uh, bothered what people think anymore. Uh, you have your opinions and I respect those opinions and in the comments you'll notice that I say that I respect your opinion but I don't want to get into any heated arguments or disagreements or anything like that I just don't do that I'm not into debate um, it's just a complete waste of my breath and a waste of my energy so that's the first thing that I don't do anymore the second thing that links to that is that I don't put up with assholes anymore or at least I don't put up with them very often. Back in the days when I was working, I encountered a lot of assholes. I'm sure there are plenty of people who, out there who probably think that uh, I'm an asshole. So uh, yeah, assholes are something that I try to limit my exposure, try to limit my exposure to. Um, many of my clients when I was working were assholes, but they paid the bills. Many of my employees were assholes, but again, they paid the bills. Um, I had friends who ultimately became assholes, and I try not to spend too much time with them. Although, one asshole in particular, um, his behaviour meant that we split up as pals about 20 years ago, and now we're back good friends. We've kissed and made up, hugged it out, and forgiven each other, which I think is important. So uh, assholes are everywhere. You encounter them, whatever you do. You can be in a restaurant and have an asshole waiter. What do you do? I mean, my view is don't go back to the restaurant. Just try and limit the amount of time that assholes are in your life, uh, particularly after 60. So yeah, that's, uh, that's number two. I uh, don't put up with assholes anymore. I'm just going to walk up onto the uh, city walls here in York to carry on talking about these these things that I don't do anymore. It's quite busy at the moment, so... Oh! Oh well, there we go. Uh, maybe I'm not going to be walking onto the city walls because they're, they're currently closed for, uh, for because of high winds, it would appear. So that's the best laid plans of mice and men in ruins. I was going to... Uh, go up onto the uh, city walls, which are, I don't know if you can see them behind me here. They're, uh, they're pretty impressive. Um, but this particular stretch of walls would appear to be closed because, supposedly, because of high winds. 
but uh, yeah there we go so anyway as i walk along this busy road i hope the sound quality is okay the third thing that i don't put up with anymore since i turned 60 or i don't do anymore i should say um, since i turned 60 is that i don't have any great expectations of people historically i have to admit to being a bit of a perfectionist um, during my career I was somebody who had very high standards um, and as a result of which um, I didn't suffer fools gladly. Now what I've found is that that's something that doesn't particularly serve you well um, after 60. Um, so now I don't really have any great expectations of people. That way I find that I'm not too disappointed when they fall short in my supposedly high standards. Um, that way I'm not going to get into any arguments or I'm not going to fall out with people. What will be, will be. People are what they are. I mean, some people are just very selfish, self-centered, don't have a great deal of empathy. And I think it's important not to let them get through your defenses. Life is short, you've got to enjoy yourself. Back to that original point, you don't want to put up with assholes and the people that you are putting up with, don't set high expectations of them and that way you won't be disappointed. I've just attempted to get on the walls here at uh, Red Tower, which is one of the uh, features here in York. Carry on talking about the things that I don't do anymore since, uh, since I turned 60. Yeah, but unfortunately, the walls are completely closed. Another thing that I don't do anymore, this would be my fourth thing, is that I don't set complex and hard to achieve goals. Throughout my life, career and business, I was a goal setting machine. I had some pretty complex goal setting systems vision boards, spreadsheets that all fed into each other, daily tasks, daily goals, monthly goals, quarterly goals, you name it, everything fed into each other. Three year plan, five year plan. Uh, I never went beyond five years. Um, and I've had a chat with somebody recently about a 10 year plan for their business, but five years was always my limit. But these days I don't have any of those complex goals. I don't look beyond a year. And even then, I just keep the goals simple and I use a fairly simple goal setting system now. Uh, I've got a Google Calendar, I have colour coded appointments and tasks and I just pop them in that and I leave it at that. It's pretty simple. I think the time for complex goals is over. I think they're good when you're younger. Um, it helps you build discipline, uh, it helps you build routine, but they're not things that I'm that bothered about now that I've turned 60. The fifth thing that I don't do anymore after turning 60 is that I don't try to keep busy. And by that, I mean I'm not looking to be productive and efficient with every minute of the day. Now, this is a fairly recent one. I would say almost up to about 60 years of age, I was trying to keep busy. I was trying to be productive. I was trying to squeeze every minute out of every day. Uh, and I've actually got my good friend Andy to thank me for this because his attitude to life is that if you're just not feeling it today, then why bother doing it? And uh, that's been a game changer for me. So over the last three years uh, that I've known Andy, and we've chatted at length about this, I've tried to have a much more relaxed attitude to what I do with my day. I still have a fair amount of routine built into my day. I am a man who likes to get up at a similar time on the morning and go to bed at a similar time in the evening, get my seven, eight hours of sleep. I find if I don't do that, uh, I find it very difficult to function. But some days I get up and uh, I just don't feel like doing anything. Um, and that's okay. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'm not at work anymore. I don't have to go to an office and do work that has to be done. So why not just chill out and putter around uh, on a morning that's what retirement's about at the end of the day in my opinion it's that flexibility retirement gives you flexibility 
So why try and carry on as if you're working? The only danger is that I think puttering around and doing very little is not necessarily something that uh, you would want to carry on doing five, six, seven days a week. I think you've still got to, I think you've still got to stay active. Um, otherwise your, uh, your brain will uh, atrophy. So, but yeah, that one's been really important to me. Some days I feel really energetic and I can do a lot of things, particularly with regards to this YouTube channel. There are days when I don't feel like doing it. There are days when I do. So when I'm in the zone and I'm in the mood, um, I'm productive. I can do a few videos in, in a day and, and other days I don't. So yeah, that's my final thing. Don't try and be busy. And how that can manifest itself sometimes in uh, retirement is that you can just end up doing a lot of things like joining clubs and stuff like that. In contrast to my friend Andy, I've got a, another friend. I won't name him because I know he watches my videos, but he's like a man with ants in his pants. He just can't sit still. He's always got to be doing something, whether it's uh, you know motorbiking, cycling, the Rotary Club, taking his dogs for a walk. I mean, he's just absolutely crams it in. I don't know where he gets the energy from. So that's the flip side of it. We've got Andy with his carefree attitude. We've got my other pal with his doesn't want to sit still because life is short attitude. I'm not sure what camp you fall into, but I'm somewhere between the two. So those are the five things that I've stopped doing after I've hit 60. The things that they've allowed me to do is to have a, a much more relaxed attitude to life, to enjoy retirement without necessarily getting hung up about trying to squeeze the most out of it. Just making the most of the years that are left and hopefully those are going to be lots of years. If you'd like to find out more about life after 50, and the things that you should do to make the most of it, then I suggest you watch the video that's coming up on the screen next. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.